All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back for another Boca podcast episode. And one of the relatively few opportunities that I've had to have a return guest on the show, Devin Robinson is here with me. Devin, thanks for hanging out with me today amidst, um, I guess, a pretty busy beginning to your week. Yeah, super thankful to be here, man. I, uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm always honored to be on the Boca podcast. I know this is uh, one of my favorites, so I always, I always appreciate you. Well, you're very kind, and and just generally, you're a super positive, upbeat person. I also really appreciate that. And for anybody who doesn't know Devin, if you want to go back to episode 261, we'll actually link to it in the show notes at BocaPodcast.com. You can learn more about Devin, about his business, and actually how he has used Instagram for the sake of building his business. Uh, make sure to go check that out, episode 261. Today, we're going to actually jump right into a conversation. I was I was telling Devin right before we started, too, that this is coming from a genuine place of curiosity on my part. And I hope that's the case most of the time in these conversations. Um, but we're going to talk about Clubhouse, Devin. In fact, as right before we started recording, you were actually helping launch a room, right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> If you know anything about me and Clubhouse, it's almost become like within the photography industry. Those those two those two things are synonymous. My name and Clubhouse. It's so interesting. Yeah. Well, I, we're going to talk about this here in a little bit, but you've already developed quite a following. Uh, we'll talk maybe about a little bit about how and, and even why in just a second. But I guess to get us started, there is a, a position statement of sorts that you have on your Clubhouse profile. It says, I help wedding photographers build a business that gives them the life they always wanted. I'm curious what this actually means to you on a deeper level, but I'm also curious how it relates to your role as a photographer as well. How do you juggle this position statement serving photographers while also building a photography business? Oh, that's a great, great question, man. So for me, uh, I'm super thankful. My photography business has gotten to a point where it's fairly autonomous, which is great. Now, now I can focus on like one of two things and I focus on both. Uh, And right now is a season of the former rather than the latter. The former is I can focus on growth. I'm now currently growing into five other states with 18 photographers. So super thankful for that. Wow. But then, um, but then the the latter is helping photographers, like helping photographers to grow their business because ultimately the reason why we work, the reason why we do anything is to have a lifestyle that we want, whether that lifestyle is to not work a nine to five for somebody and or to have your own schedule or to be able to go on vacation whenever you want or spend time with more time with your your kids. Like I want your your passion and your, the desires that you pursue, whether that be photography, whether that be anything, honestly, uh, to be able to give you that lifestyle that you want. And for me, the the main medium in which I do that is through educating photographers because that's what I previously has built up. And so the question was, how do I do that while still building my photography business? So the or how do I mesh the two? Because Anchor and Veil is so autonomous, it allows me to have the ability to, to, to branch out into the other, other areas. So I've kind of set an infrastructure and a framework in my business to where I have photographers. So in the Charlotte area, uh, so for the last year or so, I've had five photographers, two cinematographers. And then I've gotten to the point where I will have a 15 minute conversation with a bride and then never talk to them ever again, because they'll kind of just get passed on to you, uh, our studio manager, and then to their photographer, and then end up with our designers, and then their album would get delivered to them. And so because I've set up this infrastructure in such a way, it has allowed me to be able to branch out to be able to either grow into other states or to be able to help other photographers. So that's how that mission statement comes into play and how it molds with my business. My business has actually allowed me the ability to be able to do those things. And would you say that, I mean, is there, having had a, an experience developing a business that has ultimately been successful, that, that does give you a lot of freedom and flexibility, is there the sense that you want to give other photographers a similar experience? Not necessarily building the same type of business, obviously, but uh, you, you experience the success, you experience the freedom from that, and you feel like you want to give some of that to other photographers. Like, what's the deeper underlying motivation for you and wanting to teach photographers? And, and just to add an additional caveat, you know, there are a lot of photographers. In fact, I, I think I was kind of guilty of it two years ago when I first started speaking in the industry. There's this kind of selfish, egotistical thing where we like to have notoriety and presence in the industry and people to see us as a leader. And there's a lot of that that goes on. I get the sense that you have a genuine desire to help but I'm just curious what the, the deeper motivation for that is. Yeah, that's great. So at the core, so for me, and, and I think you do know me, Nathan, but I, 
I love helping people. So really, and you know, if you if you listen to anything like Gary V, it's very similar. Uh, that the things that we I say, like he's just been able to put it into words a little bit better. But for me, like I really do want to give more value than anybody can give give me in any kind of relationship. So wow. he talks about fifty one forty nine, and so in any interaction that I have with people, I want to give at least fifty one percent of that interaction because I really do believe in legacy over currency. Like I am a big strong believer in that because you know, one of my core values is integrity. And so as I build my team, um, so I have a marketing agency as well. And so uh, as I build my teams, like we operate based off of core values. And one of my core values is integrity. And it comes, I don't know if you've seen uh, one of my favorite shows, uh, Parks and Rec. A little and bit. On, on Parks and Rec. Um, so there's a guy, um, Ron Swanson. He, he creates these really amazing looking chairs, like really awesome chairs. And it takes him like re- a long time. I can't remember how long it takes, but it takes him a long time to create these chairs because he handcrafts them. He sands them. He shapes them. He does all these things. But his chairs are so nice that this like really big influencer came to him. And she was like, Ron, I want to make you a lot of money and put your chairs in every major, let's just say like Target, in every major Target in the country. Um, so here's the offer. Let me know what you think. And so Ron takes some time thinking about it and thinking through it. And so he comes back to the lady and he says, you know what? Uh, I don't think I'm going to do it because what's going to end up happening is you guys are going to mass produce my chairs. And and if you do that, the quality is going to go down. Then chairs are going to be breaking all over the place. And my name is on these chairs. And at the end of the day, all I have is my name. And so for me, that's like one of the, 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 the biggest kind of like metaphors for integrity that I could think of. Cause at the end of the mm. day, all I have is my name. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I want to spend my life on this earth, giving more value uh, and, and, and leaving a, a legacy rather than being the guy that go, that people go, man, that dude made a lot of money. I want to be the guy that people go, wow, that dude changed a lot of people's lives. And so at the end of the day, that's, that's what I want associated with my name. That's who I want to be. And so that's the underlying reason why I give and give so much is because like, I, and, and as a Christian, like, I believe that I came to, um, to serve. Uh, and so like, I want to serve other people with what I've been given and be a good steward of the knowledge and the wisdom and the, the, the experience that I've been given and, and be able to give and help other people as well. And so that's kind of just like at the core of, of who I am. I, I, uh, I, I really do just want to see people do really, really well. And it's, and it's a really great feeling when people come to me and they're like, man, I, I broke six figures this year. Oh man, I've booked this many weddings or my, this actually works. This is amazing. And stuff like that just gives me life. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why like that bridges the gap with clubhouse is because like, that's the whole concept of clubhouse. And, uh, and we'll get into that and I'm super excited about it. Well, but I'm really glad that we started off this way because I think it sets a really great kind of framework, if you will, a structure for this conversation. And it's not just relevant to Clubhouse. We may title this episode something like, Is Clubhouse for You? Because I've honestly had questions, not only for myself, but for the photography industry at large, as I've popped into this room and that and listened. um, I'm wondering if it is always the best choice. And, And again, I'll explain myself in just a little bit as we get into this more. But I think to, for us to start at the very beginning, whether we're talking about Clubhouse or the decision that we make for a particular kind of business model, or for that matter, the decision that we make about you know buying a particular camera or shooting a particular style or serving a particular target market, whatever it is, I think it's so important. And we talk about the idea of a big picture view endlessly here on the podcast. I think it's so important that we have a baseline set of values. You talked about this, Devin. Um, that drive everything that we do. And these values, ideally, and, and I'd love to hear your comments on this, this idea of a value or set of values. Uh, from my perspective, and the way I learned it from Tony Robbins, you know, th- this idea of, of a value, really, it, it's about something that's bigger than just you. If we're doing things for a selfish reason, it, it has a, a half-life, if you will. If we're, if we're fighting for something that's bigger than us, in this case, service of someone else, making someone else's life better in one form or another, now we're fit fighting for a, a, an idea that is way bigger than us and, and can sustain the effort necessary to actually accomplish that goal. How did you establish your values? Yeah, so I've never been a guy that's been like, oh, um, we need to have a mission statement. We need to have this. We need to have that. But one, I, I hired this guy who is an amazing, amazing guy, and he's kind of like my business mentor slash like, COO. He helps me to operate our team. Uh, He helps us to kind of get things done efficiently, to do things well. And before him coming on, I wanted to make sure that like we had the common core values that 
we want, I wanted to operate our business within. And so for me, I knew that they had to be things that at the end of the day, like we couldn't waver from them. Everything that we did had to be based around these so that we were making sure that we were going in the same direction so that I was making sure that uh, we all were, had a common mission in mind. Otherwise people will get off track. Uh, people will like kind of fall off the side or people won't really be on board with what you have or the reason why you're doing it. And so I'm, I, I really honestly cannot answer that question like really well, because I'm not the kind of guy that instantly is like, everybody needs core values. Everybody needs to do this because it's only been recently that I've created them, but they, they have been like kind of the underlying, what do you call it? The kind of like the underlying mission and trajectory of like my life and why I've done things. And so that's what I've just created them to be what we do as a, as a, as a business and as a brand. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're already living the values. You've kind of solidified those by, by writing them out, stating them, uh, but but I think that the significance of a value or a set of values in the end, and as it relates to the podcast, I mean, really at the very root of the Boca podcast, we're, we're talking about time management because I want to help photographers learn how to build stronger businesses and certainly be better photographers. But I don't want to do so at the the risk of giving up uh, opportunity to focus on those things that are more important than the bigger picture. And, and, and for me, I mean, relationships is at the center of that. So if, if our business or if our relationships are suffering at the hand of our business, because we're not managing our time wisely, uh, I mean, I, I, I've been kind of the, on the other end of that experience in the past. It's the last thing that I would want to do for my kids and those closest to me. And for photographers out there running businesses, you know, that may talk about working 40, 60, 80 hours a week, um, I would hate for them to miss out on the opportunity to to have a life beyond their business and to miss out on an opportunity to build the important relationships in, in their lives. And the way they're able to do that, again, at a very root level, at a very conceptual level, is to establish a baseline set of values that then act as a filter for the way that they're spending their time, which will then better enable them to run their business more efficiently, um, simultaneously also have room and time and space in their lives for those, those relationships. So I, I think this is so important really values at the root level enable us to make choices about how we spend our time, including uh, our time on Clubhouse, which then is a great segue, I think, to my my next question, um, Devin. Clubhouse, relatively, uh, well, the app's been around for a little bit. It's kind of spiked in its popularity in the last month or two in the photography industry. And I'm curious, if you were to sum up in one sentence what Clubhouse is, how would you sum it up? Um, That's a great question. I would sum up it is like a podcast or a TED talk that you can actually call in and interact with. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. No, that's a beautiful summation too. Okay. So the, the idea is you're going to listen to someone or in this case, and we'll actually talk about this in a bit more detail. Yeah, I'm excited. A, a group of people, um, individual or a group, uh, and, and ideally you have an opportunity to listen and learn something from them. But then the, the big value add with clubhouse is that you can interact. So you called up to the stage, you can ask a question and actually hear feedback from the person that's leading that conversation. Is that right? Oh yeah. It's um, yeah. And then there's a whole lot of benefits to that too, as we will get to, but yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. So how long ago did you begin to get active on clubhouse? So I, so I, I signed up for it December 20th. And I, and I know that because if you go down to the bottom of anybody prof, anybody's profile, you can see exactly when they signed up. It's not like I was like, marked it on the calendar. December 20th <laughs> is the day that I started this app. Yeah. Changed my life forever. Yeah. Like, no, that's not. It was, uh, I could tell on the bottom of the app. And I immediately jumped in. I was on a trip to, ooh, ooh, actually, I wasn't quite there yet. Um, so I would say, no, I started getting on it and started listening. Now, when I was on it, it was a completely different show, Nathan. Like when I was on it, um, like right now there's about two and a half to 3 million people on the app. Now, when I was on it, it was only on like the hundreds of thousands. And like Nathan, I was in rooms with like people who like the global, you know, the global executive of Nike, this wow. guy who the guy, this guy who does a hundred million dollars in course sales, a guy who did $500 million in course sales, a guy who's done, um, who runs ads for, for Nike, for target, for all these big companies. And it was like, to be in a room with a hundred people was really, really rare, no matter how big the people were and like not how big the names were. And so like, I was, I was like literally rubbing shoulders, talking with having full conversations with people who are like super millionaires that have done so well in their craft, who have like, um, who've been absolutely crushing it for years. And, 
there was like, I mean, I had instant access to them. And now, I mean, there's maybe only like 15 to 20, I mean, exaggerating, but like there were very, very few photographers on the app when I first got on it. Hmm. It was wild. Okay. When you, I mean, when you initially joined, I know you talked about kind of the motivation behind why you're doing, why you're so involved in it now, ultimately to give, to add value to the lives and businesses of photographers. But was it initially just kind of a curiosity thing for you? What motivated you to get on? So I don't think it was a, I don't think it was a curiosity thing. So I saw the instant value and like, like the moment I got on it. So you're right. It was a curiosity thing. Um, so I had gotten on it cause I saw a friend who, a photographer, a friend who had posted something that there was like a whole bunch of drama going on in clubhouse. And so I was like, I was like, oh, I need to, I need to check this out. <laughs> and so then I asked somebody, I knew that it was invite only and I didn't have an invite. So I just asked on Facebook and somebody gave me an invite, actually Dave Moss, shout out to Dave Moss. He gave me an invite and then, and then I got into the app and I was like, oh my gosh, it was like a treasure trove of information that just like opened up for me. And then I was instantly hooked because I'm a guy that's kind of, I'm addicted to knowledge. Like I buy multiple courses a month. Like I'm just addicted to learning. And this app is like the ultimate source of, of knowledge. Yeah. Um, it is wild. And so when I was first on it, it really was because like, it was like these crazy, I was on there before like Grant Cardone was on there and all these people were on there. So I've been on it. And, um, and so it really was like an ultimate source of knowledge. So it was nuts. But then what really hooked me on there was like the relationships that I started building with people and the way that I started connecting. And um, like, I, I will say though, for the first week or so before photographers got on, I felt completely inadequate to speak up and even ask questions because I didn't belong in these rooms with these people. Like it was nuts. And so I would just sit in there and soak it up and I would ask them questions and people would chime in and answer my question. And I'd be like, holy smokes, this is amazing. And it was really cool. And then as, um, as the week started to go on, like, so probably within the next like two weeks, uh, it started to grow like exponentially one, because if you give people, you know, give people invites or give people three invites, then it grows exponentially. Like I've gotten a total of like 50 something invites at this point, just because I own a, I have a club and because of my club, like they'll give me 20 invites like every so often. Okay. But I, but like, so I was, I was driving across the country with my, one of my friends helping him to move across the country and I didn't have anything to do, but to be on this app. And so I actually hosted a room for like, 12 hours, I think. And I taught probably for about 10 of those hours. And it was insane, Nathan. And it was like, but people would just keep coming up and they'd ask me questions. And this is the really interesting part. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that led to like a lot of monetization within the app. So we could talk about all of that stuff later. That was not the, the reason why I did it but that was the byproduct of what I was doing and the trust that I was establishing. And we'll talk about, like, I'm excited for you to get to those questions because there, there is so much opportunity and there's so much just possibilities with this app. And I'm not even talking about monetization. I'm just talking about in a different, in a different way that it's, it's super fascinating. Well, I mean, you relatively quickly developed a, quite a following um, three over 3000 followers. I think the last time I looked and on a relatively new platform, you've not been on there very long. What do you think has led to that quick growth and in, in fan base? I mean, you talk about doing that 10 hour session, teaching session, the fact that you're so just dedicated to adding value, you think that's what's leading that, what's driving that growth? Yeah. Or okay. So this is a great question. So this app is really interesting because um, what I love about it is it completely strips away most people's ability to, or not ability, but even like the insecurities of, oh, I have to be presentable before like, cause generally it's like, oh, I got to see people in person uh, or I'm going to be on a YouTube video. I'm going to be on anything like that. This, this app strips all of that away and it allows you to show up like just as you are. And I think one of the most purest forms of human communication, which is just audio, which is why it's so easy. I could be in my underwear, getting a glass of milk and just giving value. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yep. and, and it's like, it's happened before. And so <laughs> it's just, it doesn't matter where I am. There's not the, um, there's not the kind of the barrier of like having to be presentable or kind of like the, the, whatever context that I'm in, not being able to show up, hmm. I can show up while I'm doing, you know, while I'm doing the dishes where pe- a lot of people do while they're cleaning, while they're doing this, while they're doing that. And so what happens is this is what's so great about this app is everybody comes into this app and you start at zero. Everybody's on the same playing field, unless you have like, so like binge heist, he's a good friend of mine. He's on the app. He's got like 200,000 Instagram followers. And so rightly so, because he also gives a ton of value on the app. I think he's the most followed photographer on the app. Just, just period. Huh. He's got about 6,000 
like 6,200, 6,300 followers on the app. Okay. I've got 35, 3,600 at this point. Um, and so, but, but the great thing is like, it completely strips everybody of whatever they had before and it, and everybody starts on the ground level. So I had mm. some friends come in who like Nathan, like you would know, like, I would say like six, seven, eight years ago, they were like the ish, like they were the top of the top right. wedding photographers, educators in our industry. And so when you, when you join the app, there's like a welcome room that you can come into. And so a couple of them were in there because they were at the same time. And so they jumped in and they were like, oh, what's this app all about? I was explaining it to them. And they were like, oh, I think I'm going to start some like Q and A rooms, uh, open it up to that, do this or that. And I was like, Hey, just to like, I didn't say, I didn't say like this, but like, just to manage your expectations, nobody knows who you are. Like, Mm -hmm. like they, like you can't come in here with the expectation that you're just going to like bust onto the scene and everybody's going to want to be in a room with you. Because even like, I I remember distinctively when like Pi and Jerry Gajones came on the app, I knew who they were. They're friends of mine. And so there were like five of us in a room, like Pi, Jerry Gajones, five of us in a room you know what i'm saying yeah because like nobody nobody knows who they are and so this whole entire app what i love about it is your whole following all of it is predicated on the value that the the like the value that you give so Mm. the great the crazy thing about this app is um it creates and so what one thing i hate and nathan this is wild as me as a podcast host as you as a podcast host i was in a room with you know the social media examiner that that guy and then um Pat Flynn and then another dude and they they both like up there on the thing huge podcast people were like I like this more than I like podcasting (laughs) really okay yeah I mean like and it was just wild because of um podcasting is a fairly unilateral conversation either either it's a either it's a um you know an interview but like nobody has the opportunity to chime in YouTube unilateral conversation even like Facebook live is the closest to like a back-to-back conversation you can go or a a two-way conversation you can go besides like zoom, which people have to get presentable, all of these things. And even on a Facebook live, they're just typing. But on this app, what happens is, you know, like we almost like Nathan, let's say we do this podcast episode or whatever in within clubhouse, what you can then do is actually bring people up on stage. They can ask their question and then you can immediately, um, you can immediately give value and address their question right then and there. So that like trust, no ability factor, like mm-hmm. exponentially grows the trust that's gained on a podcast is like, Oh, okay. They're talking about this general idea. That's really awesome. Oh, I love that. They talked about this on this idea, but within clubhouse, they go, okay, you guys are talking about this idea. What about this applying to my business directly? And then I tell them how it applies to their business directly. That trust exponentially grows at that point because I'm directly putting putting value to them and their business rather than generic value to a whole podcast listener base. And Makes so, sense. Makes um, sense. And, and so like the whole following all of this stuff is directly correlated with the amount of value that you give because like the authentic, genuine, um, just like real conversation that goes on here is really, really like it's different, man. It's and and you've probably witnessed it as you've been in other rooms and things like that. And, and maybe if you've been in a room with me, um, that's kind of how I operate from. So like even going back to my core values, integrity, selflessness, transparency. I'm very transparent on this app. And I think that builds a whole lot of trust uh and within the within the app for me. And so I think that's one of the big reasons why I've grown so much. I also have a morning show that I haven't been able to do the last three days because I had COVID, but like um, I do a morning show every morning, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Nathan, it's wild. So for the first hour, it's generally like it's generally like people from the UK and over. And I grow these incredible relationships with people in like Scotland, the Netherlands, Australia, the UK. Like there's a guy, he's his name is Lawrence. He's 60 years old. He still photographs weddings, crushing it. He's retiring in two years. And now he's helping his daughter build her business. Wow. And the relate like and like he's just got so much wisdom and it's a guy that I would have never met otherwise ever. And now like anytime I'm in a room and he's, he's up, he like jumps into that room and it creates this really, really unique following as well. Like Nathan, I, I missed the show the last three days. I've gotten DMS. I've gotten emails. I've gotten text messages from people that are usually on the morning show that are like, Hey, we noticed you haven't been on. How have you been? Like it's wild. That's cool. And so, and it's cool because like a lot of people have been like, 
oh, you replace my podcast while I work out. You put request, you replace my podcast while I'm driving to work. And it's just such a unique thing now mm. that people want the opportunity to be able to chime in or they just hear this really unique, um, authentic, real conversation that's just going on and uh, they get to contribute and other people get to contribute. And it's like really weird. It's not really weird, but it's it's really, really cool. And so I think that's why you know the following grows like it has because people's BS meter is really, really, are really, really good on this app. And they're really good <laughs> in general. They are, they're really good in general. And so when people give value and it's real and they understand that, yeah. then people want to be around that. Um, there are a lot of people that I've seen that like try really, really hard and don't get anywhere just because people like people see right through the BS. Interesting. Do you think, what is it when you say see through the BS though, what is it about this platform? I understand the significance of giving value, but it, it, they can't read somebody's motivations. They can't read what's going on behind those, behind the audio, if you will. Um, what do you think it is about this platform in particular that enables them to kind of see through that, gravitate to those who are genuine and maybe avoid those who aren't? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I think the the biggest thing is because of the, the just the liveness of it, right? Like, okay. because people will come in and they'll ask somebody a question and historically they could either like stitch their answer or clean it up in a podcast or in a YouTube <laughs> video or yeah. things like that. Right. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah. they cannot do that on this app. When somebody comes up and asks them a question and they give like a basic answer that actually doesn't make any sense. People go, huh? All right. Well, never mind then, you know, or like, thanks man. Appreciate it. And they just kind of bounce. Yeah. And so like then other people hear that you can't hide behind like good editing on this app and you can't hide behind like the knowledge that you actually don't have. And so what's really interesting is just the way that people get exposed on this app. And then also just a lot of people are either really pushy of certain things where they're like, Oh no, like I've got this. And you can, if you want more information on that, you can go to this, you can go to that. And so this app has just created almost a culture of authenticity that, uh, uh, if if you don't actually like give value, then people write you off because like hmm. if if that now if that's the if that's the capacity in which you're trying to like operate this app on. Now there's a lot of people who operate this app on just like a really like a comedic level or even just like a stress like a stress relieving level or more of like a hangout level. Yeah. That's yeah. the great thing about this app is like you literally can start a room about anything and and like people are going to join because there's a lot of like-minded people that know where you are. And so you don't have to always be giving value on this app to be followed. You just got to be you and you just got to create relationships. I will say like I've been in this industry, I don't know, 6 or 7 years. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit longer. And I've gained more relationships and got more like just friendships on this app in the last month and a half than I have in the past six or seven years in, this, in this industry. I'm like, I'm not even joking, Nathan. Like people that like I've wanted to talk to for years or even like, like I've wanted to talk to Pi for years. And now like we, now I'm not going to say like, oh, we're friends, but like we're, we're fairly cordial with each other as yeah. we go into rooms and we hang out. And like, I've wanted to talk to a bunch of people for years that like, now we just hop in rooms and it's like, we've been friends for years and it's, and it's really cool and really unique, man. And I think that's a really awesome thing about this app is like, it does give you direct access, like to almost content or uh, like a relationship that you generally pay thousands for in like a workshop or a mentoring session or something like that. You have it almost immediately within this app. And, and I, and it's awesome. Like people are constantly blown away. Like me and Ben will host rooms or like me and some other people will host rooms. And they're just like, people are like, Oh my gosh, it's so, so cool to be talking to you, you know, like here. And, uh, and it's just wild, man. Okay. So you've, you've pretty emphatically and passionately, and I love it by the way, it explained the benefits of the platform. I'm curious just to kind of play devil's advocate and look at it from the other angle. Do you see any potential detriments to the platform as it relates to, to professional photographers? And I guess to our earlier conversation, how they manage their time, like how, how do photographers avoid this becoming a big time suck where they are, you know, it's just another form of social media, if you will, or it's not so different than just flipping a podcast on in the background while they're doing work and not actually giving it full attention. Like how do they avoid the potential detriments of the platform? Oh yeah. I'm actually, this is going to be really funny. I'm actually going to show you last week. I spent 42 hours and 30 minutes on clubhouse Wow. The week before, the week before, 55 hours, 13 minutes. The week before, 24 hours. So um, I've been on the app quite a bit. Now, uh, 
I'm on the app because I'm I, I like to give value, or I'm just listening as I like just about every night I play Call of Duty and I'll kind of have the app on as I play Call of Duty okay. and I'll be playing and people will be asking me questions still and I'll still be answering them. And so it's like I do other things while I uh, listen now and while I talk now. I will say one of the big things that for me, I'm in a place in my business where like I don't need to directly apply everything I'm learning. I'm more so teaching than I'm learning on the app. Now that's not, but like I also am learning a ton on the app as well. Sure. But um, I'm more so teaching. The one big thing that I would suggest people to do because the, the notifications are wild on this app. I mean, like off the charts if you don't manage it. So one of the big things that I would do is actually because you can schedule rooms, I would go in and look at the calendar, see if there's any rooms that are interesting to you and then and then put those because it allows you to put those onto your calendar. I would put those onto your calendar and then turn off notifications and then come in when you see those rooms that, that are the ones that you're interested in. Otherwise, like the FOMO is real because nothing is recorded. And I think that's also one of the things that, that breeds a lot of like authenticity in this app mm. is the fact that it's not recorded and yeah. people can feel like they could just come up, ask their question and know that like, okay, this is a, just an open space where nobody's going to come in later and like, oh my gosh, you asked this question on this day, but it's very just open. And so, but that, that, that leads to like a lot of FOMO where people like the fear of missing out where people are like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I'll never know. And so um, scheduling out those rooms are, are I think are going to be one of the biggest things to help you to continue to gain a lot of value, but then also remain uh, effective and productive. And so like schedule a room, get some value, turn off your notica- notifications and then put it into action. Otherwise, like, you know, they say knowledge is power, but like knowledge is not power. I think applied knowledge is power because unless yep. you, unless you're applying it, the knowledge is just like, they're storing up space in your head and it's not, you're not doing anything with it. And so unless you go, cause like this app is like, unlike anything I've ever seen as far as like the amount of knowledge that's given, but it's also unlike anything I've ever seen with the amount of BS that's given out. And so, um, <laughs> I mean, it's wild, man. It's okay. so wild listening to some people. And I'm just like, no, 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 not that, not that. And then I have to come up and like hurt people's feelings. Um, and so it's, it's, it goes both ways. And so you really do have to kind of put on your, like, put on your, like your, your discernment hat and, sure. and decide on what's going to be the best thing for, for you and your business. And that some people, like there's certain people that I just don't follow them into rooms anymore. Like they'll create a bunch of rooms all the time. And I'm just like, uh, th- no, I'm not going to go in there because I know that that conversation is probably not going to be the best. So, hmm. well, so it sounds like you have to yeah. be intentional too. I mean, we were talking about time management earlier, being intentional about the rooms that you are spending your time in, making sure that they are relevant, going to those specifically versus just leaving all notifications on and following whatever notification pops up. Um, like I do. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to be super intentional just in general as a business owner, if you're going to manage time very wisely. And I, I, so I think that's a really great reminder, but I, I want to kind of use what you were just saying uh, about those who are speaking in these rooms as a segue to my next question too. And this is more, I guess, maybe geared a little bit more toward those who either are interested in teaching or speaking or presenting, talking within these rooms, being a moderator, um, and, and those who are already in there doing so right now. Because one of the things that I've noticed going into these rooms is, and, and you kind of alluded to it already, but I, there's there's been some similarities to what I also see happening in workshops and conferences. I've been in the industry now for about 20 years, and I've, I've been to countless conferences, workshops, trade shows, and there are plenty of wonderful, like very talented photographers who really are not good teachers. Mm. And and so they're up on stage and they're they're talking, words are coming out of their mouth, but there is minimal amount of actionable value that that's actually being shared and and as a result, sadly, a lot of photographers time and money is wasted as a result. So I'm curious, uh, maybe maybe this is a two-part question. Number one, for those who are moderating rooms, who are actually setting these rooms up, scheduling events, um, how how should they go about picking good teachers, speakers, presenters for these rooms that actually have legitimate, practical, and again, actionable value to give? And then two, how do those who are speaking make sure that they they aren't just you know so stoked about the opportunity that they have to, to speak or teach in yet another environment that they don't get carried away and just ramble versus making sure that, of course, they're actually giving actionable value? Yeah, so some of that in this app is inevitable. Like, I think the bad thing about this app is it gives people a platform that they should not have. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you, man. It is the absolute truth. But like, so 
that's the one hard thing also about our industry is that there seems to be some strange natural progression that that you just once you either like have yep. uh actually it's i think it's like two or threefold once you either like have uh, you know, you can go full time or you hit six figures, then you start teaching. Yeah. But I think also as a result of the pandemic, then a lot of people, because they haven't been able to get the work, then they've, they've, they've defaulted to try to teach yeah. because they know that they, they can then be able to maybe monetize that in some sort of way because they've seen it done before. And because like, that just seems like the natural progression in our industry. And while I think that I think all people, right? I think what's everything is teachable. And I think as one of my my friend Abby says, what's what's ordinary to you is extraordinary to some somebody else. Sure. I think everybody can teach in some capacity, whether it be one-on-one, um, whether it be in a workshop, whether it be on something like this or at a conference. But I don't think everybody's an educator, right? Like I just I just don't think everybody's an effective educator, which is why you have to find the 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 right role in which you you operate out of best when it comes to teaching. And maybe that's in written form or whatever. Uh, and so I think though, I think everybody takes that as an invite to, to kind of like either push, try to push that at scale or to kind of start a career from it. And, and this app makes it really, really easy to do that. Now, as I said before, like, I really do think it's easy for people to like, I'll, I'll, I'll see rooms with like only a couple people in them when people try to start rooms. Cause I'm like, yeah, I think, you know, the market's trying to tell you something. <laughs> um, hmm. And so like you do get that. But I also do that the moderators, I do, I do think when there's other moderators involved, because the the biggest thing to try to navigate is the people that come up and raise their hand and want to speak on something. So for me, when I moderate, like I generally moderate alone and then like my friends will come into the room and I'll make them moderators or like somebody will, will include me in a room and we'll moderate together. That like the goal of the moderator. And this is where you have to be a good host, right? Like this is why Nathan, like you would do well and other people, this is where you kind of hone those skills of being a good host that when people get up and they start blabbering, um, for me, they have this, they have this, it's called resetting the room, yeah. right? Like, um, because I lead a morning podcast every single morning and, you know, sometimes there'll be a hundred people, hundred plus people in this room. People are always trying to come up and then I have to go, Hey, just to reset the room, this is what we are talking about. <laughs> so, um, so like either, either like just to remind people or yeah. when somebody gets completely off topic, I'm like, this is what we're talking about on this episode, on this, whatever this, this, uh, during this clubhouse room. And so it's, it's kind of keeps people on track, but then also it allows me to step in and to be able to kind of like navigate through those tricky people that just kind of like people will come up and they want to tell you all about their life story and all of this stuff. And it's just not completely necessary. So that's where like the moderating skills there become like people have to refine their, their sure. moderating skills. That, make, that um, makes sense. That, yeah, no, yeah, that, did that answer your question? No, I I think that's that's helpful. I, I think the other part, and you alluded to this as well, there are some instances where I've noticed going into these rooms where um, there are 10, 15, maybe 20 people even up on, you know, quote unquote stage. Mm -hmm. And in my mind that, that you're just kind of asking for chaos. Not only do you have individuals who are just amped to be able to, to say something to the general public, but now you have a bunch of those people and there's not necessarily a lot of organization to it. And I still, I'm still thinking about, um, you know, I mean, for you and I even actually, I, before we hit the record button, I was telling you, hey, you know what, I, I hate to not do video on Zoom, but audio is really important. We want to make sure that the quality is the best possible. So we're going to nix the video to, to maximize bandwidth. I'm constantly thinking about the end listener, the, the person on the other side of the content that I'm creating or on the other side of the information that I'm teaching. And I wonder if if there is a lot of that that is consistently or proactively going on in some of these rooms because it sounds or feels like chaos. It, it, or do you have some suggestions for those who are moderating rooms to manage that a little bit more effectively? Again, considering the significance of the time of those who are chiming in, the value of that time that they're giving to that room. Yeah, this is great. So this is where moderators really come uh, come into play. So I think that when there's about, I think 12 is like a good number to have an, the amount of people on stage. Now, 12 is a good number, but if you have 12 moderators, that's when it gets crazy because okay. then like everybody still, everybody feels the need to add in their two cents because they feel like they're a moderator and that's their role. Now, uh, I think that the etiquette on this app is actually 
like people really handle it well. They know that there's an order that you go in and moderators are supposed to handle that well. Like I, I get, I get, I'm thankful. I get a lot of people who like will DM me and kind of like applaud my moderating skills because I do, I try to do a good job at like addressing it quickly, moving to the next person or even like, so there will be times where, you know, there'll be certain like hot button topics where even people will kind of disagree and I've had it where like people will disagree and sometimes poke at other people. And so then I have to step in and that's where like, I have to use discernment and go, Hey, Hey, Hey. Okay. So like, we're all adults. This is a conversation. This is a good thing about entrepreneurship is we can do it however we want. So like, there's a bunch of things that, um, that I can do as a moderator that helps that out a ton. Now, when there's a bunch of moderators, that's when it becomes an issue. But for the most part, people treat the etiquette well and they know that like there's a line. You keep going in and, and you ask the question and you go next, next, next in line. And that's kind of how it goes. And then you bring more people on the stage. But as long as like, as long as there aren't too many moderators, that's when like the only time I find it to be kind of chaotic. Otherwise it's, it's been fine. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, you know, this is meant to be, at least for me anyway, an exploratory conversation. And I hope that the insight for those who either have not been on Clubhouse yet or are not quite familiar with it, kind of learning the ropes, if you will, that this insight is helpful. You have quite a bit of experience. I mean, I the idea that you were in it for, what did you say, 50, over 50 hours last week? Is that right? Yeah, I've been in it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You've got a little bit of experience. And, and to that to that end, I really appreciate your, your insight, your suggestions, your advice. Um, and, and truly at the end of the day, I, I really appreciate your heart too. I'm, I very much can relate to your, your goal, your mission, which is to add more value, um, than, than you're getting at the end of the day. I, I feel like in my personal relationships and my business, that, that probably is my primary goal. And I, and I love being able to talk to somebody who thinks the same way. Um, I love your passion in that. So a lot of people ask me, and I think you asked this question, like, what's the long game, right? Like, what's the long game for this app for me? One, it is to give value, but I'm, look, 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 man, I love business more than I love photography, more than I love a lot of things. So there's there's a lot of reasons why I do what I do. One, it, it genuinely, it genuinely is to give and to help to transform people's businesses. But also what ends up happening is because of the concept of reciprocity, people are like, okay, and if you've read Gary Vee, jab, 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 yep. right hook. You yep. know, I don't, I don't really write hook on this app at all. Um, but this idea that like, so what I do have though, is I have a page that I'll give you in just a moment, but like a page where people can go to while I am on the app talking or things like that. So when I was teaching for 10 hours or whatever, I would look down and people were like signing up for my webinar, buying my course, buying other things on my, because like the value that I've given them was so much that they were like, oh my gosh, like either one, I have to give back to this guy or two, like what else could he possibly teach me? And so that's, cool. that's been really cool. Um, so that's been one of the ways that like, I've been able to like passively, I wouldn't, wouldn't, I wouldn't actively push anything, but passively they'll, they'll go to the link. They'll see what I have. I'll go, Hey, I got this link in the bio. Like almost everything that I teach in clubhouse, I've created a page that talks about all of that stuff. So like literally like, um, my Instagram strategies, putting a Facebook pixel on your page, pricing sheets, all of this stuff. I've, I put that onto that at that page. So then everybody can go there and if they want, they could buy something or right. they could just get the free stuff either or. Um, another way that I think is going to be really, really powerful down the road is um, creating vendor relationships. Like, and I'm not saying like, there's sure there's a ton of vendors in this app that you will meet and then you'll get to know. But I think even more specifically within your market, and this is a great idea that um, one day we were all asking these questions and we were talking with Ben Hartley and Ben, and we were talking back and forth on this, but this idea that like in my immediate market, I can invite people like vendors in my market that I know into the app because what's been so unique is like creating relationships with people all over the country to where when we hop in, we follow each other around. We're like, how you doing today? How's your kids? How's this and that? People know I'm sick. They message me, they email me. Imagine doing that with vendors in your area, like You've created this relationship that you can't get together because of COVID or you guys haven't photographed weddings or with together for a while or whatever, but now you guys are communicating almost daily in this app and growing a really strong relationship that even is stronger than what you previously had. Um, and so because you're doing it so often and you're being vulnerable with each other and all of this stuff. And so having a, like immediate market uh, vendor relationships in the app. Cause you're sharing the, like, I just got 25 invites. I'm going to put it, I'm going to send it to people within my market so that I could be able to, um, to be able to build up relationships with them. And I think that's going to be the key as well. That's, that's so huge. I, I guess just that free form, the free form nature of the platform enables those kinds of conversations 
Um, I mean, w- would you see it almost like a like a networking meeting of sorts, like where you're scheduling this thing that, hey, you know, Chattanooga, I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Chattanooga wedding photographers uh, and or wedding vendors. We've got a clubhouse room set up for this Friday at, at 7 p.m. Let's jump in in there and, and hang out, that kind of thing. Yep, that's exactly right. So I actually applied for the club, North Carolina Wedding Vendors. And so like if I get that club, then I'm going to inv- I'm gonna add in a ton of people on there. And then like I'll have – I'll host club closed rooms where I'll just be like, hey, how you guys doing? How's North Carolina? Especially as we talk through what's happening in the um, – like because you're – each laws are different for each state. And if you had a whole yeah. entire state room, then you yeah. guys could talk about that together, build up those relationships, connect with each other. I think that's really, really key. Yeah. Wow. Okay, man. Well, I, I, I love that you had even more to add on there at the end. I really, oh, truly Nathan, appreciate I got more and more to add, too, but <laughs> you, only, you don't have any, you don't have much more time. <laughs> well, you've been super generous already. Um, what, what would you say just maybe to kind of close this out here, what would you say would be your, your hope for those photographers that jump on clubhouse? Like what's the biggest takeaway that you would want them to have from using the app? Yeah, I would say my hope is that they find the right people to follow, Hmm. uh, that they are also following a lot of people outside of your industry because you literally have some of the most literally. Okay. Nathan, Elon Musk was on the app last night. I heard that. You know, but like, listen, you know who else was on the app last week? Michelle Obama was on the app last yeah. week. Like the, the the CEO of Reddit, the founder and CEO of Reddit was on the app last week. Yeah. Some like trading CEO was on the app last week too. And so like you have an incredible opportunity to get knowledge from the literally the smartest people in the world. Yeah. And so for us to stay within our little like, 10,000 person bubble on clubhouse that has 2.5 million people that are all people that are people who want knowledge or have knowledge or really growing then like, then like, I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice. And so following people that are the smartest in the world at what they do and learning from them, but then also taking it easy and building real relationships with people um, that you never would have had the opportunity with otherwise, I think is going to be another really key thing to do. All right, man. Well, we're going to put all of this in the show notes, bocapodcast.com. And speaking of following people, let those listening in know how they can follow you online as well. Yeah. So uh, if you want to, you go to weddingtips.club. <laughs> cool. So, um, so if you, if you, uh, weddingtips.club is like that page that I have people like that I send people to. So if you want any information on anything that I ever teach, yeah. like completely free for the most part, weddingtips.club is a page to do that. And then like, that's where like anything else I have is. Um, and then if you go on clubhouse, it's just at Devin Robinson and then you'll see me on clubhouse. Yeah. And I have to say, you've got probably the most thorough and expansive for that matter profile that I've ever seen on anybody's social media app anywhere. I mean, it is like (laughs) super, super detailed. Do you think that's one of the um, I, I don't know, almost necessary things that, that those using Clubhouse should do if they really want to get involved in that platform? So I don't think it is, but it's really interesting. They index pretty well on the app. And so the first three lines of your bio is what everybody's going to see when they look at you immediately and know what you're about. Yeah. But then like, it's very searchable. Everything is very searchable in your bio, even like emojis. They're super searchable in your bio. So uh, people will follow you because of those things. I put that stuff in there just because like I do interact with a lot of other like professionals, the not just photographers okay. in the uh, within the app. And so for people to see who I am and what I'm about, um, it does give them a reason to follow me, whether they feel like, oh, I can associate with the fact that he's a foster parent. Um, I can associate with the fact that he loves crypto and stocks or that he does this or yeah. that we have the same en- Enneagram number. And so I love putting all that stuff in because it is more of a business platform, I think. Uh, it, at least it was in the beginning. And now it's become a little bit more relational, but I do think that, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just had it like that and I've kept it and I like it. That's cool. It also helps me because like, if I forget what my numbers are, sometimes I just go to my <laughs> profile and I'm like, oh yes, that is my Myers-Briggs or my style of influence. So yeah. I love having those things in there. That's funny. I actually have a, I'm a total nerd, man. I, I've got, I use Evernote extensively and I have an Evernote document called Specs just for that. Literally everything from the size of particular brands of clothing that I wear to my blood type 
to the license plate numbers of my vehicles to you know motorcycles that I've I mean the, the, the list goes on because there's so many different things to keep up with I'm like I'm not even going to try just put it in the Evernote document you're doing that That's with awesome. your your clubhouse profile <laughs> pretty much if you want to know my blood type just go to my clubhouse profile <laughs> brilliant hey That's Devin awesome. I, I really appreciate it man thank you so much for doing this for for all of us today no problem. Hey, one more thing. One more yeah, thing. Yeah, make yeah. sure you make sure you get your name on dot club. For some reason, I think dot clubs are going to blow up. So I got Devin Robinson dot club. <laughs> yes. So. You, you, and for those listening in, you're talking about the, the domain name, the right? URLs. Yeah. yeah, the yeah, URLs. yeah. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. I'm going to go check it out as soon as we get done here. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah, they're like $3 on GoDaddy. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. We'll link to GoDaddy too for everybody listening in. <laughs> if you're not on Clubhouse yet, uh, look for an invite. I may even have some actually that I can post in our show notes at bocopodcast.com. Uh, but, but get on there, get involved, um, not only to, to listen and to learn, but ultimately to, to add value as well. I think that's super important takeaway from today. Thanks, Devin. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, Nathan. Thanks so much, photographers, for listening to the Boca Podcast. Will you let us know what you thought of the show by leaving a review of the podcast in the Apple Podcast app? And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast and suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My email is Nathan at bocapodcast.com. Make sure to visit our sponsors, photographersedit.com, custom photo editing for the professional photographer, and milu.com, that's M-I-I-L-U.com, the simplest way to create and manage timelines and shot lists for the events you're photographing.